Last night was an experience. But I don't think you've changed quite as much as some might think. I'd recognize that vigor anywhere. It sounds like the city's trying to get back on its feet already. Normal life is returning. Which means things are about to become decidedly more difficult for you. Perhaps you could wear a mask. Say you're a leper or have taken religious vows to conceal your face. For a time, perhaps. Deception and concealment has been part of my life for so long. But this is different. This is beyond me. After what this city's been through, people will scarcely tolerate cuttlefish at the fishmonger's stall, never mind a full-blown mind flare in their midst. Do you know what this means? You deserve to be vaunted, adored. Statues in your image should stand on every square. A whole generation of babies should be named in your honor. But it will not be so. All those people you saved, most of them will never know what you did. But you know, and so do I. I'll never forget. I need to get you out of here. It was difficult enough smuggling you in here covered in cloaks. It'll only get worse as normalcy returns. We have. And our luck held, despite everything. But we can't rely on that forever. I won't roll the dice day after day if your life is on the line. I can't. At least, not right now. I'm sorry. After everything that happened with my parents, with Shah, I need time to myself. Time to find myself. That would call for an awful lot of discretion, you know. Enough to make even a former Sharon take pause. But, after all we've been through, I really should know better than to doubt you, shouldn't I? All right. Let's try. We've gotten this far after all, just... Let me do the talking. You'd be amazed what a pretty face can get away with. I didn't expect to be nervous, but seeing everyone here like this, it's strange, isn't it? I feel like I must have dreamed the last few months. Now I'm waking up back in camp with my hair smelling like wood smoke and fallen leaves stuck to my backside. Save it for when we're alone. Anyway, I know it's real. I know we made it. I just wish I could go back in time and reassure the old me that it would all work out. But enough introspection. This is a party. So we should divvy up what we tell people about what we've been doing these past few months. I'd hate to be a bore that comes along and regurgitates the same story to someone moments after you've told them. Any ideas? Well, there's the visit to the House of the Moon, fending off Sharon assassins. That stray imp that joined us. Bing Bong, wasn't it? We've squeezed in a lot. 
and I'm glad I got to share it all with you. I'm sure we'll have them hanging off our every word. <laughs> I'll leave you to do some mingling, unless you need anything else. That can be arranged. Almost a shame we're with company. I'd be tempted to let you whisk me away someplace quiet. <laughs> Why? Are you expecting to be gone for long? <laughs> All right. in those arms. With music in the air and wine flowing, oh, I think I'll manage. Don't get into trouble, but if you must, fetch me first. All this stimulating conversation leaves you hungry. To speak is not enough. You wish to explore the brain of your friend with your beak. Think of Shadowheart's cerebellum, which controls her dexterous hands. Any ritual caster must have a tightly commanded hindbrain. This is highly illogical. There are plenty of other craniums awaiting your suction. And this is a prize ally. And besides, the hypothalamus in this brain before you is secreting. The hormone of love is swelling somewhere in the skull. It's curious. After all the wonders and monstrosities we've witnessed, waking beside you seems more unreal than any of it. I've forgotten what it felt like to greet a sunrise without fear of it being my last. Soon, I'll deliver the crown to Mistra and be rid of the orb at long last. I'll be free. Whatever for? I rather like this new you. In fact, your tentacular transformation has inspired me to make a little change of my own. I've decided to drop this whole gale of water deep business. It's a bit pompous, don't you think? You're now in the company of plain old Gale Decarius, a most brilliant wizard of intentionally limited renown. At your service. Now, I believe this is the moment where I should get to my point, so to speak. I love you. More than I've ever loved anyone, mortal or immortal. And you've proven your love for me in more ways than even the greatest mathematicians would dare to count. That being said, I wondered if you might consider accompanying me back to Waterdeep as a new member of the Dakarius clan. Your present condition is that you're the one I love. And your current form is merely a reflection of the depths of your sacrifice. It only makes me love you more. There will be some practicalities to iron out, the guest list, the venue, and we will need to find a very open-minded cleric. I promise we'll make it work. If you'll have me. You will? Oh, thank goodness for that. We'll need time to make the arrangements, of course. The catering alone will need to be... 
quite extraordinary. <sighs> but that's all to come. The day is young, and there are thousands more days ahead of us. You're quite certain I look acceptable. I can't remember when I last wore something other than my teaching robes. It feels a little odd to find myself in something so... unsinged. Sorry, my love. That was a little insensitive of me. May I say, your tentacles are looking wonderfully moist this evening. <laughs> no finer elithid ever walked the face of Faerun. I won't keep you to myself for too long, but while I have you, I want to say thank you for encouraging me to attend this evening. Teaching at Blackstaff Academy has proven such an unexpected pleasure. Sometimes I find it hard to tear myself away. Just one of the myriad unexpected ways life has delighted me in recent months. Even my own city feels new to me, now that I share it with you. I'm just glad you're happy there. When we met, our lives were rather different, and being here this evening, well, reminds me how much has changed. When our adventure began, our troop had no more in common than the worm in our brains. Standing here, now, I no longer see the people we were. Frightened, desperate, alone. We changed. We survived, and we did it together. I've missed them. I've missed this. I wouldn't go quite that far. You made sacrifice enough to end it when you did. I dread to think what else might have come had it gone on for longer. God knows we suffered for our salvation, but it was worth it, wasn't it? We did something incredible. And wherever life takes us, we'll carry the memory of that with us forever. Now, much as I could spend an eternity in your company, we see plenty of each other already. Tempting as it is to keep you all to myself, would be terrible company if we didn't mingle for at least part of the evening. I love you. Now go on, before I change my mind. You wish to explore the brain of your friend with your beak. You would save his temporal lobe for last, if you were to eat, Gail. Language, learning, memory. You must have quite the fine example. And besides, the hypothalamus in this brain before you is secreting. The world awakes to a new dawn. And we are here to greet it. Not as conquerors, but as saviors. Saviors of a city that we must now leave forever. I thought your mind had evolved, not degraded. Do you not see? No matter our deeds, we both have the semblance of villains now. You even more than I. The people we saved will not thank us. They will hunt us and kill us. Why did you not? We deserved to rule. But despite everything we gave up when we destroyed the brain, 
It is good to be here with you. Your body is gone, but your mind is more beautiful than ever. Before, I could hold all that you are in my thoughts. <sighs> now I mourn the loss of the tadpole, because I can only imagine the wonders it could show me if our minds locked together as they once did. You are infinite. So am I, my love. Let us be monsters together. Why would I ever leave? In time, you will learn to master your form, and then you will be perfection. No higher power can command or restrain us. We will assemble an army of thralls. <laughs> and who then will be able to stand against us? <sighs> Chalt, say, arm, water deep. There is a world of wonders to discover, and boundless realms to conquer. But we can look to the future tomorrow, or the day after. Today, let us think only of ourselves in this moment. We have won a lifetime together. Yes, my love. Are you done talking to your friends? Can we leave? I have hosted gatherings of house matrons and high priestesses who wanted nothing more than to murder one another before the night was done. I have negotiated the handover of hostages and smiled politely while sensing a dagger at my back. I thought I was equal to anything, but this is also pleasant. And I am not even sure anyone here likes me. Then they are fools. You are the best of them, or I would not have chosen you. Let us finish our socializing and be done. In truth, I have never enjoyed parties, although they do present the perfect opportunity for a poisoning. Excellent. Taste my lips. They are already laced with toxins. None shall be spared tonight, not even you. Now go. Mingle. Carouse. Indulge. We will need all of our strength. I know. You wish to explore the brain of your friend with your beak. With all Minthara's hate, you wonder if her cerebrospinal fluid will be bitter to sip. And besides, the hypothalamus in this brain before you is secreting. My shining star, since I've known you, we've shed more blood than could ever fill the Chion Tha. The wounds we sustained were the testament to our might. I'd venture into the wilds with you at my side if I could. The Elithid who saved Baldur's Gate, I would cry and the people would greet you as the hero I know you to be. A beautiful fantasy. If only I could wish it into being. The people I'm sworn to protect will see only an elithid. They would cower in fear. Or worse yet, try to fill you with arrows and daggers. I love you. But I can't be with you. Not the way I wanted. I would never. We'll make a place for you. Somewhere secluded. 
somewhere you can call home. I'll bring you anything you need. Uh, robes, books, sustenance. You'll be safe. I'll visit as often as I can. We can still dance. We can still write a story. We can still be us. This doesn't have to be the end. Gods, you're so wonderful. My heart's near to bursting. What a gift you've been to me. What an honor to know a true legend. It pains me to know you must live this half-life, hidden in shadows when you deserve to bask in the Sword Coast sun. But it warms me to know I can always find you, dance with you in the years to come. Your mind turns to the future. Does happiness lurk in the remote corners of the coast? Does it lurk anywhere at all for one stuck in the skin of a monster? But in one thought, you find comfort. You don't have to face tomorrow alone. God's love. I must look a mess. I just rolled out from under a pesky ogre when Withers yanked me in. Oh, I didn't mean... Well, I didn't mean that. I just gutted the ogre, not... Yeah. How about I change the subject before I dig this hole any deeper? Have you been... comfortable in the Undercity? Is there anything more I can bring you? you too. I promise I'll make more time. Oh, before I forget, I've made contact with an assassin, name of Artemis, a killer of killers. Certain arrangements can be made. Your hunger requires sating, and it's not easy to smuggle the spoils of my hunts. Speaking of, I've got new stories to tell you. New trolls I've torn open. New ghouls I've cleaved. Say you'll indulge me. <laughs> you'll have to choose one tale and one tale only, I'm afraid, or I'll be yammering all night. You want to hear about the Stegosaurus that bullied Candle Keep, the impossible lich, or the young dragon who crawled out of Deeping Cave? It did, though the adventure had peaceful beginnings, as so many often do. I made camp south of Daggerford. The night was calm, lit by the green lanterns of a caravan. I was about to dig into a hearty stew when it began. A deluge of bone. It was as if a thousand skeletons were walking the skies and had split into pieces. Skulls, knuckles, ribs rained down on me. I turned my skin to bark and made for the light. The bones clumped and clattered into unspeakable aberrations. I cast and carved until I reached the light. I found no caravan, but a sickly green lich. Each fallen bone was a shard of its essence, an impossibility. Yeah. But what does a world of nether brains and magic crowns care about the impossible? I raged through the night. By morning, the fields were buried in shards of bone, the liches included. I won't lie, losing the eldritch blasts and the hexes took some getting used to. Nothing but void, where once there was hellfire. So, I stoked new fires in myself using the lessons my father once taught me. Now, the Blade of Frontiers is a ranger. A true hunter of monsters. A warden in more than just name. Go on, my treasure. The night's young. You shouldn't waste a moment of it. Or waste a single drop of wine for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oops, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. <laughs> you wish to explore the brain of your friend with your Will's frontal lobe 
which processes his judgment and measured words, would be a delicacy befitting his nobility. And besides, the hypothalamus in this brain before you is secreting. You would think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now our paths cross once more. We have all pined for each other's company, I sense. I cannot imagine otherwise after what we shared. That bond was forged in a crucible that can never be stoked again, Oak Father willing. It is a bond that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can, for I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, assume a doppelganger has taken my place. That was more than worth the wait. How thoughtless of me. Come here. Ah, there it is. That is what I've been missing. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember them. The old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes, and the land is rich with harvests and bountiful trees. Nature and civilization are in harmony. Stronger together. In a manner of speaking, yes. Though it is a more complex, evolving beast than I could ever have anticipated. True balance is no simple, fixed thing. Hmm. I see that now. We welcome folk from all walks of life. Anyone who wishes for a new start. Naturally, it can be chaotic at times, but it is a thrilling sort of chaos. It thrives in ways I could never have dreamed of. As am I. I may age more slowly than most, but I do believe I've gained some new laughter lines of late. Now, please, tell me all, and spare no details. I shall not lie. I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see, my charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halsin. Another is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat given the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. I am all ears, though I never cared for that phrase. A rather unsettling image. Yet not by me. I shall tell the children of your heroism and sacrifice. They shall know what they owe to you. Trust me. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening, as much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now, 
Unless there was anything else? You wish to explore the brain of your friend with your beak. Every time Halsin speaks of balance, your thoughts cannot behave. You only dream of what cerebellum tastes like when it sends the signals to his vestibular system to keep him from wobbling. And besides, the hypothalamus in this brain before you is secreting. <sighs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. He wasn't kidding. Where's your mad bastard? You brought us back! <laughs> Commander Zula won't know where the fuck we went! Ha! Oh, man, I can't wait to say hi to everyone. Look at them, the beauts. Rest up, soldier. My tin can will be all right for the night. And you and me will get to sleep with both eyes shut for the first time in six months? <sighs> then again, maybe we won't sleep at all. Me too, my love. See you soon. Come here, you goon. Hey, before you go, I've been thinking about those blueprints we found. Zariel's probably got a load of Cambians guarding that forge. I'm sure she knows I'll want in. She'll do anything to stop me from fixing this thing. I might have an in with one of the guards, though. You may remember my old friend Flo. Not sure she'll help us, but maybe. <sighs> we might get to come home permanently. Maybe even sooner than we think. You wish to explore the brain of your friend with your beak. You consider Karlak's brain stem, the stalk meant to regulate her body's temperature. Will it come pre-cooked? And besides, the hypothalamus in this brain before you is secreting. <laughs>